Okay, today we're going to do a return to home tutorial. Hope it's not uh, too windy out. First thing you want to do is go to the settings and check your home point. Now, if you say you moved the craft after it said home point has been recorded, you can always update the home point by just going here and it will say home point has been recorded. Now, for some reason, it's not talking to me. Hang on a second. Oh, it's not talking to me because I have this microphone hooked up. <laughs> uh, that's why it's not talking to me. So, uh, but anyway, it normally will say home point has been recorded after it records to home point. So if you go there and hit OK, it's going to re-record the home point. Now, one thing you should be cautious of, if you do a firmware update, it can uh, erase your home point and reset it. Um, right now I have it set to 100 meters, which is about 325 feet or so. Um, and that's the altitude it will go to and when it's a fell safe and returning to home. Let's get into more about uh, return to home. And the best way is to, to show you. So let's go ahead and uh, take off. It's very, very windy today. It's trying to stay in one place. All right, so the return to home function brings back the aircraft to the last recorded home point. So I just showed you how to do that. And there's three types of return to home. One is the smart return to home, the low battery return to home, and the fail safe return to home. And remember, you need a strong GPS signal in order for it to return to home properly. And that would be before takeoff. So the home point is wherever you launch the aircraft from. Now the GPS signal strength is indicated by the GPS icon. As you can see on the screen, you see it currently says 16, 17, 16, 17. Um, that, is the, that is what you need to have locked on before you take off though. Now, the home point's recorded, and if you lose connection with the remote control for over three seconds, it'll automatically return to home. And if you are on the Wi-Fi, it's 20 seconds. So after 20 seconds, it will return to home by itself. Say you have it set to 250 feet. Your return to home altitude is at 250 feet. And you are at uh, 300 feet. It's going to return to home at 300 feet. It's not going to um, go down to 250 feet. But say you're at 150 feet and your return to home altitude is 250 feet. It will raise up to 250 feet before going home. And then after, um, when it goes back to land, it will stay two meters above the home point. The aircraft can sense and avoid obstacles when forward visioning systems enabled and the lightning conditions are sufficient. The aircraft automatically climb to avoid an obstacle and fly to the home point at a new altitude. So when it, when it goes over an obstacle, it is not going to lower back down. So say, the obstacle, say your return to home is 250 feet and the obstacle it runs into is about 275 feet. It's going to go above the obstacle, I believe it's about 16 feet above the obstacle, and it's gonna continue the return home altitude at that altitude. It won't go up and back down again. Um, the aircraft cannot return the home point when the GPS signal is weak or available. The aircraft cannot avoid obstruction during fail safe return to home if the forward vision system is disabled. And of course, you know, you need to set your fail safe altitude before takeoff and after firmware update, double check that it is correct. Now, the user cannot control the aircraft while it's ascending to its fail safe altitude. However, user can press return to home button to exit uh, the ascent and regain control. So, smart return to home. Let me show you this. On smart return to home, it will sense and avoid obstacles in its flight path. But remember, if it sees sunlight, say you're flying to the sunset. Let me show you. Stop looking at me. Okay, say you're flying to the sun. What happens when you're flying to the sun, it will think it's going to run into something. So... If you are flying it to the sun on the return to home, it's possible it will stop and give you a avoidance error. So just be aware that if it's flying into the sun, it is possible that it can 
um, stop on its return to home because it thinks there's something in front of it when it's not. Now, if you look on the screen, you can see, you see how it says 17 minutes, 14, 11, 10 seconds, right? And you see that H, that is the home point. That's the power required to return to home. It knows how far it is from home and it calculates that automatically. The aircraft will land automatically if the current battery level can only support the aircraft long enough to descend from its current altitude. The user can still use the remote control to alter the aircraft's orientation during the landing process, though. So, low battery return to home is the fail safe that's triggered when the battery is depleted to a point that may affect safe return to home. Um, so they advise you to return to home immediately. The aircraft will automatically return to the home point if no action is taken after a 10 second countdown. So it gives you 10 seconds and it says, okay, screw you, I'm gonna go home. Uh, the user can cancel the return to home by pressing the return to home button on the remote controller. The thresholds for these warnings are automatically determined based on the aircraft's current altitude and distance from the home point. Now, if you get to the point where it's critical low battery, if you get to that point, it has to land immediately and it is just going to go straight down no matter where it is and that is not good so you don't want to get to the point and if it is getting to that point um the dji go app will display flash red and the aircraft will start to descend the remote control will sound an alarm and it must land immediately uh, now when the critical low battery level warning is triggered and the aircraft begins to land automatically, you could push the left stick upward to make the aircraft hover its current altitude, giving you an opportunity to navigate more appropriate landing. So say you're over water and you're on a boat and it's coming down, you can kind of hand control it and get it to um, land on the boat. So you can help navigate it a little better. So the home points recorded upon takeoff for the precision landing, and you have to be takeoff vertically, and you must be more than uh, 32.81 feet or 10 meters. So if you go to 32 feet and you're at 10 meters and you're taking off vertically, it will do a it can do a precision landing, and it looks and takes a picture of what's underneath it. Um, and when it's auto landing, you can pull the throttle down to accelerate landing. Moving the sticks in any other direction will stop the precision landing and the Mavic Pro will descend vertically and landing protection will remain active. So here's the interesting things that you should know about on return to home. Hang on, let me get this. Let me get this up out of the way so you don't have to hear it. While we're watching the sunset. Large wind velocity warning. Yeah, it is a little bit windy. So the return to home includes smart return to home. Low battery return to home is triggered when the aircraft is further than 20 meters from the home point, which is uh, about 66 feet. It will return to home at the current altitude if flying at or above return to home altitude and will ascend to the return to home altitude if flying below it. So right now we are 29 feet. So my return to home altitude is about 325 feet. So if I return to home right now, it should not increase any more than it is, and right now it's 235 feet. It should just go directly over the home point and start landing. So let's see what happens. So right now we're 30 feet away, which is under the 66 feet. So return to home, including smart return to home, and low battery return to home is triggered between 16 feet and 66 feet. If the aircraft's altitude is greater than 32 feet, the aircraft will return to the home point at the current altitude. If the aircraft altitude is lower than 32 feet, the aircraft first attempt to uh, automatically send to 32 feet or 10 meters from the current altitude. So it should not ascend anymore. And it didn't. And it's orientating itself to where it was before, and it's coming down. So I canceled it um, because I wanted to show you 
what happens when you are lower than 32 feet. So let's move it out this way. Or the winds are something else today. All right, so now I'm gonna go down to about 15 feet. Okay, so now if I hit return to home, it should go to 32 feet or 10 meters and then come home. And I am 49 feet away, so. It's ascending. And it went to 31 feet. And it's coming home. All right, so I canceled that. You can see that it was going to land. Okay. So now we're about 50 feet up and four feet from home position. Now, if you are within a 16 foot radius, it automatically descends and lands where it is. So let me move it out to the street. So I'm within a 15 foot radius. It should land directly on the street and not go back to the driveway. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, it seems to want to go back to the home. That's uh, the instruction says that it should automatically, air crop automatically descends and lands. But before I remember I did this and it would not go back to home point, it would land in the street or wherever it was if it was out inside that uh, 16 foot five meter radius. So that changed actually. So let's move out to 66 feet. Now, if, I'm at, if I move out to 66 feet. Let's move out to 66 feet. More than 66 feet. Okay, I'm at 75 feet. Now, since I'm at 75 feet, it should go to the return to home altitude. So it's gonna go all the way up to 325 feet and then come back down because I am outside of the radius of that 66 foot radius. So let's see what happens. And sure enough, it's ascending. Rapidly ascending now. Hundred and forty, fifty, sixty, one hundred and ninety, two hundred feet, two twenty five. I believe I have it set to three hundred and twenty five feet. And it should raise up to three hundred and twenty five feet. And it's going home. Well, it went to three hundred and twenty six feet. And now it's landing. And you can make it land faster if you press the stick down. Right now it's going down about um, at uh, eight miles, about eight miles an hour. I'm pressing the stick all the way down. And look, I can speed it up a little bit. Not much though. Yeah, it, went, it increased a couple miles per hour. Okay, so I canceled the return to home. So now I'm gonna show you again, I'm gonna move out. I'm getting a little battery error. 
So now if I hit return to home, it shouldn't go up to the altitude. It will just move back to the home position and then land. And it is. And I'm gonna let it land because the battery's dying. And this should be a precision landing, so it should take off, should land where it took off from. Altitude is off. It's weird. So if it determines it's safe to land, it will just go ahead and land automatically. Um, if it doesn't determine it's safe to land, it will ask you to confirm first. Okay, so that is a tutorial, a quick tutorial on return to home and how it functions. I hope that clarifies some uh, details up for you. If you have any questions, please uh, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe so you can get uh, notified of more tutorials. Until next time.